Hey guys and welcome! If you clicked on this video, there is two possibilities. You either played Battlefield 5 already, but you're still not sure about the right settings, or you just downloaded Battlefield 5 and you're wondering what are the best settings to go with before you jump into the action. So to make the whole process a lot easier for you guys, today we're gonna go through the settings together and I'll explain everything you should know about them. Remember that if you miss something when we will be setting up the game, you can always pause the video, go back and I'll also leave timestamps in the pinned comment for those of you guys who are interested in the specific section so that you don't have to watch the whole thing. Having said that, let's get to it, because the video will be long anyway. First, we have the control settings and if you are a console player and you notice that I'm playing on PC, don't click away just yet, because a lot of those settings apply to consoles as well. Just stick with me and let's go through all of it. First, we got the soldier and vehicle sensitivity. As you can tell, I'm going with the low numbers here and if you are curious, I have 800 dpi on my mouse. Why low sensitivity? Because it's a lot easier to control your weapon, which means you get higher accuracy. And if you get higher accuracy, you use less ammo to take out your enemies and you kill them faster. The next setting titled raw mouse input is only for those of you guys who play on a PC. Don't want to go into details here, but I highly recommend you enable it to avoid any problems with getting the input from your mouse. It's just better to have it enabled. Vibration of the controller, just leave it as you wish, it's not important for the gameplay. Invert vertical look and invert vertical flight. Guys, leave those two disabled. Don't touch them, it's the default setting, leave those off. Soldier stick sensitivity and vehicle stick sensitivity. This is personal preference, again, I assume those of you guys who play on consoles, set your sensitivity here. Set those as you like. Next, we have one of the most important settings in the controls. Soldier zoom sensitivity, which is basically a sensitivity that you will have when aiming down the sights of your weapon. Notice that mine is set to 90% and this means that this is 90% from the 4% I have set in the soldier mouse sensitivity. So it's not general 90%, it's a 90% from 4%. It's quite confusing, but that's how it works. Then we have Soldier Sprint, that's default setting on hold. I disable double tap forward to sprint because I don't enjoy having it under W, I always press shift if I want to run anyway. And the last three settings, I left them on hold, those are default settings. We can move on to the advanced section. Stick acceleration, I recommend to set it to 0% to avoid inconsistencies. Simplified airplane controls, I suggest having it disabled. I'm not really sure what the option does, because I've tried flying with it and the only difference I had was that the plane was flying a bit sloppier and the whole flying was so awkward with it. I'm not really sure what it does, but I definitely do recommend you turn it off if you want to have the full flying experience. Vehicle aim, relative control. Guys, make sure to disable this setting. What does it do? Well. Let's say you sit in the vehicle, you are in the tank and you want to go forward but you're looking backwards with your turret because you were just shooting a guy who was trying to blow you up with C4 from behind. Now what will happen with this setting enabled is that you will go into the direction that you are facing. Even though you want to go forward and you press the button responsible for going forward, if you're looking behind, backwards, you will go backwards instead of forward. It's quite complicated, but trust me, it's a lot easier to play with this setting disabled. Then, decouple aiming from turning, make sure this one is enabled for both driver and passenger, because this option makes sure that if the vehicle is turning, your aiming will not be affected by this. Very important. The next setting is called uniform soldier aiming. And I got to admit that this one is totally a personal preference. What does this option do? Basically, normally when you have 1x sight and 10x sight, or actually a scope in that case, 
Normally the sensitivity on one X would be a lot lower than the sensitivity on the higher zoom scope. Now what this setting does is it matches the sensitivity from both scopes to the same one so that it's easier for you to develop muscle memory. In theory. Because personally I just hate the option and I disable it in every single Battlefield game. What I would suggest you to do, if you're not sure if you should have it enabled or not, play a couple of rounds with the option enabled and then disable it and play a couple of rounds. If you think that the previous setting with it enabled was better, then just continue using it. If not, stick with it being disabled. Really that simple. Then we can skip whole bunch of settings here because those are really not important and we get soldier zoom sensitivity again. This time we can modify it for every single scope. However, if you guys remember, couple of minutes ago we set our sensitivity to 90% in the basic tab, which means that there is no need to touch anything here. When we scroll even lower, we can set sensitivity for every single vehicle and stationary weapon in the game. I personally recommend to set the plane sensitivity to 125% because it will be much easier to maneuver with the plane in the air. As for the other vehicles, I just leave them at default 100%. Let's go to the next tab. Let's hop into the audio settings now, since those are quite short. First, we got the master volume for adjusting the volume of your game. Then we have the music volume. If you wonder why I disabled it, well, I can't really play the music in the game because I will get copyrighted on YouTube. Then we have output configuration. If you have headphones when playing, make sure to set it to surround 5.1. If you are playing on speakers, make to set it to the stereo 2.0. Then we got the sound preset. Again, if you are using headphones, make sure it's set to headphones. If you are using speakers, just set speakers. Then we got the in-game announcer, you can leave this at default, leave the VoIP enabled by default. The only thing I do recommend here is to increase the VoIP volume, because it's quite quiet. And as for all of the other settings in this tab guys, I recommend you leave them at default, there is absolutely no need to tweak any of them. Let's go to the video settings now. Make sure your game is set to full screen, your monitor is the monitor that you're playing on, naturally. Then. Also make sure that it's set to the proper resolution of your monitor and the proper refresh rate. In my case, I use Full HD 144Hz monitor and that's the one I'm choosing. Brightness, adjust it to your liking on your monitor, I have it on 50%. Field of view, make sure it's at least 90. And same for the vehicles. I recommend a setting of 74 here. Next option, very important one. Please make sure it is disabled. What does it do? Basically, it scales the field of view while aiming down the sides and because of that, your opponents will appear smaller and because of that it will be harder to shoot them. Make sure it is disabled and your opponents are actually bigger in your sights. Motion blur? Disable it. Weapon depth of field? This is a personal preference. It depends if you like the weapon to be blurred while aiming down the sides or you want it to be sharp. I prefer the sharp one. All of the other settings below, such as chromatic aberration, film grey, vingetti and less distortion, I'm not even sure if I pronounced those right, they basically decrease your performance if you enable them and make it harder to see enemies. Disable them and make your life easier, trust me. Custom color settings, well, we're not gonna touch those, I'm not really colorblind, but if you guys are colorblind, well, you can always tweak those for yourself. Going over to the advanced tab, we got couple of settings here as well. DirectX 12 is disabled in my case because my graphic card doesn't support it, so yeah, you guys have to check it for yourself. If your card supports it, then I recommend you enable it, if it doesn't, then just leave it disabled. Resolution scale, leave it. UI scale factor, also leave it at default. Frame rate limiter, just make sure it's either matches your refresh rate of the monitor or it's a buff. In my case, it's set to 144 because I got the 144Hz monitor. 
Future Frame Rendering Setting If you are watching this video when the game is still in the beta, I recommend you turn it on, because it will improve your performance. However, if you are watching this video when the game is already released, I recommend you disable it. Because, while it added some performance in the beta, when the game is finished, I hope it will not cause any problems. And, additionally, if you enable it, you will have extra 33 milliseconds of input lag. You don't want any input lag. You want to maximize your chances and beat your opponents. That means disable. GPU memory restriction, you can leave it enabled, it doesn't really change much. Vertical sync, please make sure to turn it off because while it makes your game smoother, it also adds another input lag, which means you will be slower and enemies will have advantage over you if they don't use this option. Those graphic settings are the ones I use for the most performance in the game while still being able to spot enemies at the distance easily. So, texture quality on ultra, everything else on low except for the mesh quality, because mesh quality is a setting responsible for rendering enemy player models, especially at the distance. Make sure this one is set to ultra. Naturally, remember that if you want to have a little bit more cinematic experience and see the whole beauty of Battlefield 5, you should put everything on the highest settings. I'm using those settings myself because I want to maximize my in-game performance and I'm focused on scoring kills and taking those objectives. And the last but not least, the gameplay tab. We're gonna go fast through this one because the video is long already. Show hat, of course, enabled, player created content, that means there are emblems and drawings, it is not disable customization button, don't mistake it, I just leave it enabled, chat lock, appears when active, don't magnify the chat, inventory, when active, crosser visibility, 100%, crosser color, I set mine to yellow, it's personal preference, make sure you got the kill lock enabled, filters for the kill lock, those are personal preference, I have those set up, Awards, vehicle seat info, critical messages, share usage data, I have those enabled, those are default settings. Heat indicator, alright, here you have to make couple of changes. The visibility, of course, 100%. Heat color, I have mine on default on white setting. However, with headshots, I have it set to red, so that I know when I'm hitting headshots. When I score a kill, I have a green hit marker. Leave the damage based shape enabled, armor hit indicator color, again I changed mine to blue or like bluish purple or dark blue, I don't even know how it looks on the video. Anyway, as for the minimap settings, texture opacity is at 50%, rotate with view is enabled, make sure this one is enabled, it's quite an important option, flight zoom radius. 500 because I want to see a lot of the things in the air and I don't necessarily need the minimap to be that precise. Vehicle zoom radius at 150, on foot zoom radius at 50 meters. Again, default setting, it's pretty good, so no need to change it. Minimap size, I use it at 100%, it's the default setting. However, if you guys want it, you are free to increase it however much you want. I just don't see a reason to do so, so that's why I play with a small minimap. Then, make sure to enable the option to show stationary weapons. Why? Because then you know that if there is no icon for the stationary weapon on the minimap, it is either destroyed or it is occupied by the enemy. So you can tell that there is an enemy in the stationary weapon even if they are not spotted just because you don't see that it's empty on the minima. Objective icon opacity, I have it set to 80%, then I got the friendly and enemy set to 100 by default, gadget icon opacity is reduced to 85, ADS icon opacity, objective icon opacity is reduced to 0, so that it doesn't block my vision and I don't really need to see which objective I'm at while ADSing and shooting someone, in that exact moment I don't really need this information, Friendly Soldier Opacity, I got this one set to 80%, Enemy Soldier Opacity to 100 and Gadget Icon Opacity to 0, 
Again, I don't really need to see gadget icons in this particular moment when I'm shooting someone. Stick with me guys, we only got one last tab and it's the advanced one in the gameplay settings. The only settings I changed here is I disabled the parachute auto deploy because I prefer to control when I'm opening my parachute and the automatic option someone opens it in the weird moments. Then I disabled hint system but I do not recommend to turn it off if you are a new player. I've played alphas and beta for around 60 hours already, so I don't really need those anymore. But if you are a new player, don't make it harder for yourself, just let DICE teach you how to play the game. Network performance graph... Oh, yeah, this one is disabled by default. So, that's it! Those would be all of the options in Battlefield 5 that I personally use, and I think are the best ones to go with if you want to maximize your both performance of your machine and also your performance as an individual players while playing the game. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video where I'll be covering all of the secret tips and tricks in Battlefield 5 that you can use to gain advantage over your opponents. Trust me, majority of people don't know this. Remember that there is this small subscribe button below and if you click it, I'm always a bit happier. And as always, if you enjoyed, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and I see you on the battlefield!